this is a short video to show you the new features coming with Photographer 3.2. So if you use Cycles, you will notice that there is a new option here in the lens panel called Fisheye. And you may already know that you can render Fisheye lenses by changing the lens type to Panoramic. And then you notice that you have this new lens focal length. It's not the same as the normal lens, it's another value. And you can change it up to 15 mm. But what you may not know is that you can actually go above 15 mm. So if I type 35, then I actually end up with a 35 mm, which has some nice distortion, like spherical distortion on the sides. And that's something that you may want to use. So what this option does is that it makes it very easy to switch between a fisheye lens and a non-fisheye lens. So you just like add the distortion by still keeping the same focal length instead of having to go through all the settings for the type and the panorama type. Second new feature is the auto exposure. Here in the exposure panel, set it to automatic, and now your camera will adjust its exposure depending on the brightness of what you're looking at. So if I look at the street, I'm getting this brightness. If I look at the sky, everything becomes darker. If I look down again at the street, it becomes brighter. We have some test squares here to show you what it does. If I'm looking at this dark square, it's going to adjust the exposure to make it look gray. Same for this gray, same for this white. Uh, the way it works is pretty simple. Uh, it's actually sampling the image uh, on a 10 by 10 grid. It's going to just take a pixel every 10 step. And you have two settings to control it. You have the center weight and the speed. The center weight is defining how much you give importance to those four pixels in the center of the screen. If you set it to 100%, it's just going to take an average of those four pixels. If you take it to zero, it's going to take an average of those 100 pixels. The speed is, of course, to control how fast you want it to adjust your exposure. The auto exposure is available in the viewport for EV as well as cycles. See that as the pixels get rendered, it will just update the brightness. And also LuxCore. However, I noticed some issues with LuxCore and CPU, so it will let you know that it requires GPU device to work until I find a better solution. The auto exposure is only available in the viewport, but if you're happy with the result of the auto exposure, you can simply switch back to EV and it will store the last measured exposure value. Or you can use the set exposure key as your animated camera. You can simply set an exposure key to the different frames of your animation and then switch back to EV and you will see that the EV value has been animated accordingly. The auto exposure works even better with Blender 290 viewport denoising as the denoiser provides more accurate information to the pixel that gets sampled by the auto exposure. Also, something to keep in mind is that if you're looking through your camera, the points are going to be placed inside of the camera frame in this area, while if you look outside of the camera, it will take the entire viewport for the mid ring. Also, if you move the camera, frame outside, you will see that the pixels are still going to be sampled in this area. These pixels are not going to be sampled for the metering. One issue you may encounter using EV is when using soft shadows, the auto exposure can get stuck in an infinite loop because the soft shadow gets updated and it triggers a new sampling of the auto exposure and then the auto exposure being changed, the soft shadows get updated. This is an issue that I reported to the Blender Foundation, and I hope that it gets fixed soon. In the meantime, what you can do is just turn off soft shadows while you're using the auto exposure, and you can turn them back on when you're done with the auto exposure. And the last little feature is the negative values are now supported by the physical lights. This is something that is supported in EV and Cycles, where you can input a negative value to make your scene darker, and now you can also do the same with physical lights. So you can eat away the light from an area and make it darker. That's it for this update. Hope you like it. Bye.